Hello guys and welcome to my review of the 2023 Summer Patch, as well as all the nerfs and the buffs. Starting with Eagle, the watchkeeping ability of the lore Sentinel has been reworked. A lot of good players like this old lore a lot, and it'll be interesting to see how they will use the new lore. Now, the Falconers can be assigned to a zone to generate loot pouches, collecting the natural resources of the zone. In this patch the Lion Clan finally gets some love again. After getting nerfed in the latest patches, the Lion Clan received some huge buffs this patch. Let's talk about them. First of all, the Recruitment Cost in Faith starts at 200% the price in currents and decreases by minus 15% with each knowledge unlocked to a minimum of 100%. Basically rendering the Faith Rush, where you hold all your faith after only unlocking two lures, inefficient, while greatly increasing the late game convert potential by the Lion. Now it makes so much more sense to just unlock your knowledge until you reach the amount of 100% recruitment cost. Here you can see a comparison where I converted 5 units with faith. In the first case I unlocked 5 lores and in the second case I unlocked 6 lores, decreasing the amount of faith I need to convert. Apart from the military changes, the Lion Clan received some nice economical buffs as well. Now, upgraded military camps give an additional plus one livability to the zone they are built in. In addition, the value of the lore Miraculous Healing has been multiplied by 3 and is now split among all wounded units in the zone. Now it's time to talk about the biggest change, not only regarding the Lion Clan, but the Stoat Clan as well. The Smithy received a huge buff this patch, influencing both the Lion and the Stoat Kingdom, giving plus 15 bonus to all production in the zones without the requirement of a Smith assigned is really, really strong. You can now set up huge economic tiles with the help of the Smithy, and mining iron as fast as possible has now become very important as well. Here you can see an example of a flat increase of production by the smithy. Speaking of the smithy, now more than one smith can be assigned on a building to forge military upgrades, greatly reducing the forging time. Once forged, the military upgrades appear in the building panel and can be added as an extension to an upgraded building camp to give the selected abilities to the associated units. So theoretically, you now can have both the deflect on the champions and the slow on the archers. Now it's time to talk about the stag. The stag got changed a lot this patch. Reaching 500 fame no longer reduces the colonization costs, making a fame win for a stag more difficult than it was before. Apart from the economic nerf of the 500 fame, the stag's 1000 fame bonus got nerfed as well. Overall, the stat increase of the war chief got reduced. Watch out though, the stag clan was not the only S tier clan which got nerfed. Let's continue by talking about the Raven. If you watched my Northguard tier list, some of you might already know about my opinion about the clan. In this patch, the Ranger's Law got nerfed and the scouting speed increase is reduced by 50%. Additionally, you have to have 500 fame in order to target town halls. As scouting with Harvest was rarely worth it, Shiro has increased their scouting speed by 50%. I personally think that this is a step in the right direction. The Raven clan used to be way too strong I think it still will be very strong, but it won't be as OP as before. Moving on, I am so excited to talk about the changes of the next clan with you. Let's talk about the Rat. The Rat's military units no longer have happiness requirements. Moreover, Rat got a huge buff since the lore Invasion got removed and is instead replaced by Healing Fire. If your purification pyres are burning, they heal your nearby units when they are outside of combat. This effect is 50% less effective during overwork. I mean, look at this. If you want to heal your villagers, you actually don't have to have healers anymore. How awesome is that? Now that we talked about all the latest exciting news of the patch, 
let us dive a little bit deeper into the small changes the patch brings. Starting with Goat. Goat became a lot more beginner friendly as the sheep now assign themselves automatically to sheepfolds. As you can see, this takes a couple of seconds though. Also, the lore Industrious has been reworked and you can now assign one more sheep to your sheepfolds. If you are a good player, I'd highly suggest still microing your sheep. Next is the weakest of the clear clans, the Lynx. And man oh man has Lynx received a nice buff. I mean, plus two attack power for each cat? Hell yeah! I don't know about you guys, but I'll definitely try a lot of the new Lynx out. I mean, look at these kitties, aren't they cute? And this will definitely increase your clearing speed by a lot. I honestly don't know how much it will buff Lynx in the long run, but it is a step in the right direction. And it'd be amazing if Lynx could get a spot in the current meta. Moving on, there was a small change to the boar as well, as the healing speed of the animal companion of the chief got reduced. Honestly, that nerf is very deserved as the healing on the bear was just way too fast. Officially, the kraken is untouched, but Chiro was sneaky with this because they actually indirectly nerfed the kraken by nerfing the spectral warriors, reducing the defense from 10 to 8 and completely removing the projectile dodger ability. Also, what is this description even? Now that we talked about all the changes regarding the clans, let's actually talk about all the general changes of the game. First of all, let's talk about the military camp upgrades. Now, the military camps give different bonuses when upgraded, depending on the unit. Cheat bearers now gain defense, axe throwers now gain movement speed, and the warriors stay the same. Also, you now gain less fame from building upgrades that cost only 5 stone to upgrade. The buildings affected are the house, the forge, the scout camp and the kingdom buildings. Furthermore, the marketplaces got nerfed big, rendering the negotiation build completely useless. So playing red actually takes a lot of skill now. Apart from that, the relics got changed as well. Myrnia received a slight buff, so the lightning damages have been multiplied by 3, and Refluence Jar no longer affects villagers. Last but not least, finally the Warchief's movement speed has been reduced and the Sheetbearer Forge Shield Ball bonus has been reduced as well. Actually making my wolf build with forging x forwards first a little bit better than before. So that's it about the summer 2023 patch review. I hope you learned a lot and as always thank you so much for watching and take care. Oh wow! You are still here? You really earned yourself a secret tip. You can now send scouts to town halls to generate diplomacy, greatly boosting your law production at 30% mutual benefits and boosting your trade routes at 100%. Now on you go and once again, thank you so much for watching.